today. So let's do a quick run through of what um, what's on today's agenda. So uh, as Jack had shared earlier with a lot of you, one of the things we wanted to do was discuss how organizations today um, working through a landscape of a constantly changing environment with the regulatory um, pressures and compliance issues and changing an environment, how they go about adapting their business models. So one of we've come up with, given the fact that we have over 20 years of experience as enterprise application integration uh, experts, uh, process designers, um, we have now built a proven methodology which allows us to couple uh, two of IBM's best products when it comes to the IBM practice for business process management and solution delivery. So we're going to talk about that today. And the idea is to uh, talk a little bit about how we can document a business model, a process in BlueWorks Live, and how we can then go about um, handing that over to an integration developer who would do the implementation model development uh, within business process manager itself. So that's on the agenda. We will also talk about what are the typical process challenges, and how ProSoft, um, as I mentioned earlier, has a proven methodology for a BPM discovery and a solution delivery approach. The focal points um, and demos today will be on two technology products, IBM BlueWorks Live, where we'll show you a live sample of a loan origination model that we built specifically for this webinar. And the BlueWorks Live will showcase the business model, and the BPM 8.5 will show the integration model. So with that, let's move to excuse me the next slide where we will talk about uh, the typical business process challenges. So at the outset, I, I want to just quickly share. Um, I'm sure that there is a, a vast uh, audience that has is joining today. There may be some people that are very technical. Uh, there might be certain organizations and uh, staff members that are joining, maybe perhaps looking to invest in BPM. Perhaps they already have BPM, uh, and maybe they're looking to get into a process discovery or an assessment type of a scenario. And that's why we're very thrilled to be able to share with you our, our experience. But at the outset, um, I, w I would like to share that you know BPM in itself um, is not so much about the technology as it is about uh, the process and the management discipline itself. So it involves you know managing uh, the end-to-end -end work that organizations perform to create value for their customers. And, and so it, the idea is that BPM helps you operationalize your business process innovation through collaboration between business and IT, and you can also realize the return on investments that go beyond just the traditional measures of efficiency uh, to help grow the revenue for the company. So some of those examples would include things like increased productivity, measured processes that were previously hidden, um, ensured compliance with regulations, increased agility, and a heightened speed to market. So I wanted to just share that at the outset because when we look at a process today, when you don't have a, a process and a management discipline like that, unfortunately what happens is you have um, members of a particular department or a division that work through various systems, perhaps a billing or an ERP, and they, there, there's a lot of sort of chaos. You know, you have unstructured tasks, maybe different resources are working with phone, paper, email, et cetera. There, is, uh, there tends to be inefficient working spans and systems, inco inconsistent prioritization, uh, incomplete or inaccurate data flow between systems and people, uh, a lack of control over process flow and business events and exceptions, uh, and finally, uh, poor visibility into process performance. So what happens here is because of that, you might have great people um, do, trying to do their best, working overtime, uh, but still you're not quite getting the full value of, of um, you know, both your employees, your resources, and the process. So 
one of the ways that uh, you know business process management and BPM help with that is it sort of complements your process and I'm going to show that in the next um, slide here there we go so as you can see this is this is sort of the before picture where you don't actually have a BPM component added to your business process it's a lot of unstructured tasks uh, and then here is sort of an after picture that um, attempts to showcase how now you have a process in place uh, and people are following a particular process. You have automated workflows and decision making in place uh, which help reduce uh, errors and improve consistency. Standardized resolution across ge various geographies and leverage existing systems and data. We also, one of the benefits is we monitor business events and initiate actions, real-time visibility and process control. And on the right hand side of the screen, you will see that uh, there are several benefits as well where we talk about what are some of the advantages. So we see a huge reduction in manual work. And why is this important? We already have great people in our organizations doing wonderful work, but wouldn't it be great if we could also give them an appropriate um, orchestration capability via means of BPM? that allows them to be really empowered to come in to, 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 to work every day and do the best work of their lives. That's what BPM is all about, is trying to structure those tasks and to reduce waste um, and ensuring that things are being done consistently on time and when they are perhaps not, that there are escalation procedures or monitoring procedures uh, built in place that help um, mitigate some of those concerns. So the other things, the other ad advantages we have uh, when we present a, you know, a methodology like this is we talk about metrics, measurements, better visibility, and business-friendly reports. This is so important. A lot of our customers come to us today and they say, well, maybe we have a custom homegrown VPN solution and we have like an Excel spreadsheet or a report that gets generated every, every day, but... Uh, at this point, it's just not very clear for us to go back to our business units and consolidate it. So BPM can also uh, help you extract certain audit trail events from your process and give you some insight into uh, perhaps how many transactions are being completed, which ones are pending. Uh, and as a result, the supervisors and the staff um, level management can now uh, perhaps proceed to now work on those uh, list of to-dos that are, are remaining. So, and last but not least on this slide, you have rapid, agile, and iterative process improvements. I want to talk about this a little bit because I know that historically when we built stuff in IT, there was always, um, you know, the sense that we've all seen those 300-page Word documents where the business would send us those requirements and then in IT we would go off and build something perhaps that would take six months or would take, you know, 12 months or a year and a half and we'd go back and then, you know, it might end up being a decent product. Uh, but what we found is over the years is with better collaboration, with use of uh, business process modeling and discovery, you are now involving the business in the actual development process. And so BPM can work with waterfall, it can work with um, agile, iterative development type methodologies. So it's very flexible in that sense. Uh, but I just wanted to highlight the fact that it, it really gives you so much more rapid development uh, time. And before you even get to the point where you're doing a lot of development, it gives you tremendous amounts of insight into how, where and how in your business model do you actually need to make change. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in just a bit. So I want to talk about how we actually go from the before picture, which is um, your typical process challenges, unstructured work, unstructured tasks. You know, Bob goes over to Mary and says, well, how do you do this again? Is there any documentation uh, to now to point B, which is um, Bob now gets a, a work item assigned to him, and he knows exactly what he's working on. 
what he needs to get done and where where he needs to get it done, what documents he needs, et cetera, et cetera. So how do you get from point A to point B? Um, ProSoft has as I mentioned, a proven methodology that we've used for several of our customers very successfully. And uh, a lot of our customers actually come back to us saying, you know, we, you came and you had implemented this for us. Uh, we really liked what you did. Uh, can you actually do this for another initiative of ours for us? So it starts with, it's a two-part two approach. And the, we call it the pure analysis. It's trademark. We've gone as far as trademarking um, our our solution delivery approach. So the, there are two aspects to it. One is the pure analysis, which is the process discovery initiative itself. It, it's a three-step approach that typically spans about eight weeks. And this is where traditionally we have a set of very specialized consultants that perhaps come on site uh, and work with your executive management and your subject matter experts to build a process inventory via means of what's known as a process discovery effort. And in that, what we do is we, uh, we work with your business subject matter experts to capture the current state process model, which is also referred to as the as is, um, and it shows where we are today. And the future state process model, which is, we call that um, the 2B process model, and where it is that we would like to be tomorrow. And that's, of course, driven by, you know, various business strategy initiatives and, um, you know, market-driven type scenarios. So, but we, we capture that information. We capture the pain points. So what are the pain points today? I, I, I mentioned a, um, <clears throat> an example where maybe there's a lot of rework happening. Maybe you don't have the latest version of a particular document or a business rule. So you're having to go back to the business back and forth. Maybe something needs to be changed every, every month. So a lot of those types of pain points, maybe it takes uh, a particular resource uh, two hours to complete a task because she has to literally walk over to another person's desk and you know, take, take a bunch of files and question that, uh, ask that person for their expertise before she can complete her task. There may be interdependencies in the process. So those, those types of pain points, we work with your subject matter experts with the business. We also have, uh, we do conduct sort of interviews, so to speak, with the IT staff, and we try to get a, at least a high-level process with systems uh, and services, touch point mapping. So this idea is that the process is the map, and every process is going to have certain business rules. And every process will also, at some point, touch a, a particular system. So what are the mappings that occur between each process? What, what IT systems does that process depend upon? And what are the, um, what's the nature? Is there, are we retrieving data? Are we supplying data? Um, that kind of thing. You know, so those, all that kind of information, we, we come up with a mapping. And it gives us a good picture because then when we go to the future state, it says, okay, so well, we have these, these things in place that these other uh, particular assets we might need to perhaps invest in or at least bring it to management's attention. After collecting those and building those assets, we, do, uh, we perform a process gap analysis. And at that point, we provide a recommendation and what I like to call change levers back to the customer to, to really empower them to make the decision. We as ProSoft um, specialists, BPM and process uh, design specialists, will, are really here to help our customers. But what happens is sometimes, you know, every organization has different budgets for every quarter. Uh, there may be certain things that uh, the CIO or the director of the IT department might perhaps be more interested in. Perhaps they are following a certain um, pattern in, in their line of thinking and maybe BPM is right there at the top because they want to maybe cut some cost or they want to speed up a particular process. Whatever that initiative is, our job is to provide a report at the end of the day based on scientific metrics that we've been able to capture and say to them that um, if you pull this lever, that you can make your process go a lot faster. And if you pull this other lever, you can reduce cost. And so really empowering the customer to make that decision is what we 
uh, do at that point. And the second part of that solution delivery approach is we offer a fixed price process discovery. We can work with your particular needs and uh, come up with a fixed price. And then we can elaborate on the pilot and focus on the process metrics and start uh, to propose a particular solution for like a phase two uh, technology enablement strategy. <clears throat> so the next thing is um, I just wanted to make sure, um, let's see, okay. My apologies. The next thing is we, we talk about, um, now that we've discussed the actual uh, methodology that ProSoft uses, we want to talk a little bit about the technology. And what I want to do today, what some of I would like to do today, is really talk about uh, this, this webinar being a little bit different, whereas instead of just showing or sharing uh, you know, 50 slides, we would really like to kind of show you how we actually do this, and that's why we prepared a small little demo. Um, but I want to make sure that uh, my screen is actually being displayed. Um, can somebody on the ProSoft side just confirm, please, that uh, the screen is being displayed? Yes, Praveen. This is yes, Praveen. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, and so now we talk about why is how is BlueWorks Live used. So first of all, it's an IBM product, and it it has this product uh, was part of uh, the acquisition that IBM had made of Lombardi back in 2010. Back then, this product was called Lombardi Blueprint, and IBM had acquired Lombardi and improved the product, and now it's called BlueWorks Live. And I'll explain why that phrase is used. But the idea is that it's really, uh, there's no heavy install for organizations. It's an online tool that you can access from your browser. So it's a um, software as a service capable product, SAAS. And anybody can use this. And these are the, the typical types of roles. We have an editor that can create, edit, view, comment, review, approve, um, et cetera, et cetera, perform these tasks. And you have, so this would be the person that would actually build the process models. The contributor is somebody like a business subject matter expert who would be supplying information and maybe adding comments to the process as well and saying um, the lead time to that is really more like four days and not two days those kinds of things. And then a viewer is somebody who has the ability to just access and see what the model looks like. They can't actually make a comment or um, any changes to it. And these are, I wanted to make sure that we shared some pricing information. So editors are $618 per user per year. Contributors are $123.60 per year, per, excuse me, per user per year. And viewers are sold in packs of $500 for $12,360 a year. So I just wanted to quickly share that. And the next thing is now, here is where I wanted to actually show you, um, the sample loan origination process model demo. And this we're gonna do in BlueWorks 5. So we're, we're actually gonna show you, we're not just gonna show you a, a pretty slide, we're actually going to show you the product itself. And before I do that, I'm just going to quickly show you the high level steps. As you can see, this is a business process model that was built in BlueWorks Live. And it has a number of swim lanes. We have the customer swim lane, the loan officer, underwriter, and system. So the process gets kicked off by the customer submitting a loan application request. The loan officer then reviews the loan request and evaluates the applicant's score, uh, FICO score credibility, that kind of thing. And the underwriter makes the final decision. And for purposes of simplicity in this webinar, we just wanted to say, you know, if, if it's a certain amount of loan, then you, you know, if it's less than 10,000 or so, then, you know, the, the, the loan gets approved. If it's more than 10,000, then the loan gets denied. And the final step is that the email notification, 
an, an email notification, which by the way is a system task, uh, gets sent out to the customer. So these are the high level process steps and these are the process roles and participants. We call these roles in BPM, uh, which should corroborate to the story that we have here in terms of swim lanes. Okay, so now I'm going to go and I will switch into demo mode. So if you'll just excuse me a second, I will show you just how easy it is to bring up BlueWorks Live. And so the way you do that is you go into blueworkslive.com, which is an IBM product. And uh, as Jack mentioned, we are a premier IBM business partner. So we have we partner with IBM um, on several different uh, engagements. We have access to the best collaterals and uh, and products from them as well. So now here I'm actually in the real product. And as part of the discovery effort that I talked about earlier, I mentioned that we would you know, as a, as a process efficiency and modeling expert, we would come on site and document your entire process. Uh, but in here, what the beauty of this product is that I can start up a task and I can document things like uh, participant, business owners, the expert, what systems are involved, perhaps the due date, the cycle time, any wait time or lead time, uh, things like cost. And you know your your typical SIPOX model suppliers input et cetera et cetera. And if there if this particular task in your business process is a value add or a non value add, so that's really uh, really nice to have and be able to capture. You can also capture things like problems. And I talked about pain points earlier. Uh, and I said customer may accidentally enter incorrect data or social security number et cetera et cetera. Those kinds of things you can capture. Uh, if there are any policies associated with that process or business step, any documentation, uh, any attachments, comments, things like that. So we are right now in what's known as a process diagram uh, mode, but there's also something that's known as a discovery map. And here we can break things down into um, different milestones. So here's where a loan gets submitted, here's the risk analysis portion of it, and here's where the underwriter makes the final action. And here are all the various steps that are uh, associated with each of those milestones. Now, I have another mode in this, and everything that I enter in my particular um, uh, property section of the step gets documented. And so I don't actually have to have a separate, like a Visio diagram and then a separate word document for uh, the documentation itself. Everything is built in and rolls up into one beautiful document. So I can, once I'm done building this uh, for my, my customer, I can hand this over and I have all this information that's documented and it's tied to each of the processes. So there's a lot that you can, you can accomplish uh, in this product. Um, I want to quickly talk about um, this idea that you can do, you can you can analyze the process, so you can figure out who is doing what, maybe where are the bottlenecks in the process, you can do some analysis, and then you can, um, once you've figured out that you've optimized the process, the current state, and the, perhaps the future state now is where you would like to be, you can export this process into a Word document, PowerPoint, and more importantly, into a process that then gets handed over to um, the BPM 8.5 integration layer, which would be the, that would be the implementation model. Because one of the challenges we've had historically is we've not been able to always uh, impress the business with having different versions of the IT assets and models and different versions and, and uh, pictures of the business model. And so being able to have somewhat a good relationship between the two uh, is very important to business uh, because that, you know, the irrefutable fact is, is that the business is are the, the experts at the process. And so IT, at the end of the day, serves the business and needs to understand what their pain points and challenges are. So, um, but I will also add one amazing thing about this product, and that is that once I'm done exporting this um, model, I can export it in BPMN format, and that then I can hand over to my 
um, my integration developer, my workflow developer, uh, Sumbit, who now has the ability to, he doesn't have the, the need to actually start from scratch. So he doesn't need to go to various subject matter experts and say, well, what do you actually do in this process? And maybe what does your UI look like? And uh, you know, what exactly, what data is coming in? All that is already captured in this. So the beauty is he can actually import this process directly into uh, BPM 8.5 and start his development work more rapidly. And that's, that's phenomenal. I mean, we have not had uh, many products like that that can do that before. Uh, and last but not least on this particular point, I'm going to add the fact that what's different, I think sometimes people feel, well, why do I really need BlueWorks Live if I have, you know, I have Visio? So I always try to clarify this point because uh, Visio is more of a flat-based diagramming tool. And it's hard to keep different track of different versions. If you have a very big process that spans across various departments and organizations and roles, and you have 50 or so, or 200, 250 activities, very, you, at some point you're going to have so many tabs, it becomes very hard to manage. This is a much more comprehensive uh, tool. And the beauty is, is that you actually collaborate with the business. And the bridge between business and IT is further um, uh, diminished because you're, excuse me, the, the gap between business and IT is further diminished and you're able to further bridge the gap, uh, if, if, you, if you will. So the next step is, so I just wanted to show you that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to show you, so I showed you quickly uh, the BlueWorks Live. And the next thing we're going to do now is, uh, let's see here. So to emphasize the point I was making earlier, which is the business models and the IT models, this is what I was talking about. Here is your business model that I showed you earlier. And I showed you in BlueWorks Live the tool itself. And take a look at this. Here is your IT model. This is what somebody is going to talk to you more, a little bit more in detail about. Um, and he will switch into live demo mode as well. But look how closely they are aligned. You have the same milestones, and you have the same swim lanes. And you, yes, you have some, you have some system-based activities that are occurring behind the scenes, which he will talk about in greater detail. But uh, being able to have this conversation with business is just so much more. Uh, empowering to both business and IT, it makes the process of software development life cycle so much more cleaner. Um, so I'm, I'm very, very thrilled to be able to share a little bit about BlueWorks Live to you today. Um, and now I will hand over, I will, excuse me, I will yield to Sambit um, so that he can talk a little bit more about Business Process Manager uh, and Business Process Designer 8.5 and the implementation layer. So, Sambit, uh, over to you, please. Thank you, Pravin. Hi. Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. This is Sambit. I work as a senior architect for ProSoft. I have more than 10 years of experience implementing uh, BPM processes um, uh, as an architect. So, let me share my screen. Praveen, can you make me a presenter? Uh, yes, you should be the presenter now, Sambit. It's probably taking a couple of seconds. You gotta love technology. Yeah, it might be. I'm yet, Any, uh, yet to, no, not yet. OK. Um, let's see. How about we do this? I'm going to change. Let's see if we can do this. How about that? Yeah, got it. OK, good. Thank you so much, Brian. So let's talk about architecture of IBM BPM. And before that, can you guys confirm you see my screen? I can see your screen, Sambit. OK, thank you. So uh, here is the architectural diagram. Here in the middle, you can see process center, 
This is it is the development environment for IBM BPM. You can see here process center server and performance data warehouse. For process center server is the server sits on what IBM's uh, WebSphere application server. Here we do uh, all the process design, uh, services, integration layer, UI, rule, everything. And uh, it runs, uh, we design the processes and also test the processes here. And performance data warehouse is a dedicated database for reporting purposes. We have KPIs to uh, track the business data and uh, stamp it to the performance data warehouse for reporting and analysis purposes. And as you can see on the top, the authoring environment, it is a development environment where developers do their development. This is only available for process center. And the process center console is also only available for process center because process center is not only just a development environment, it's also a central repository of all process artifacts. There is a uh, deployment we can do directly from process center to uh, other environments like staging, test, and production. Here in the below, you can see the same uh, process center architecture without authoring environment and process center console. This is uh, the staging, test, and production environment. But every environment will get process admin console where we manage administrative things uh, like user setup, group setups, um, the global environment variables, uh, exposed process values, and or and so on and there is process portal process portal is where business user logs in and uh, do or perform their tasks and lot more not only just to perform their tasks they also do a number of features like they see uh, the dashboards uh, reports um, they do uh, all kinds of social BPM that has been introduced by IBM after eight version, so um, the after so let's uh, discuss the loan application that we have created. This is the authoring environment. This is only available in the uh, dev environment, and this is the uh, this is where BlueWorks Live process. Here we connected to the BlueWorks model that Prozin has discussed. We have imported directly the process, loan orientation process that has been discovered and directly imported into the process designer. So we directly got this BPD. BPD is called process diagram. So it will give us a jump start to work and develop on the services and the decision and all other system tasks. This is the simplest of a loan application process just for the webinar purpose and it just took a four to six hour of effort and we have used only the out of the box feature of IBM VPN. So here you can see uh, there are customer uh, role loan officer role, underwriter role, and system role. I have created uh, roles for this and a few users um, uh, uh, naming Sambit as a customer, Praveen as loan officer, and Ram as underwriter. Okay, now let's log into the process portal just like a business user and run and test the process flow. Submitter role can only have access to initiate the loan application process. And Submit is part of the submitter role. Let's log in as 
come back. Yeah. This is the task list view. Here on the right you can see these are the processes which he has access to launch or initiate the process. Let's click on the loan origination process to initiate an instance. The instance ID is 165. Click and claim the task because it is the task is assigned to group of people to a role. So if any user wants to work on the task, he needs to claim the task before acting on the task. Here is the UI. Let me fill up the form quickly. And, and while somebody is filling that out, I'd just like to clarify that what he's doing is what a business user would be doing at this point, filling out the loan application. And he is running the, he's executing the implementation model right now from a UI that was out of the box functionality from ID and BCM 8.5. So there was no custom coding or uh, any kind of development that was needed for this. This is all out of the box IBM functionality. Back to you, Sambit. Yeah. And let's submit the application after filling in, uh, filling up the loan form. Okay, now that task is gone from his work list. Now it uh, it must have moved to the next task in the BPD that is loan officer task. Let's log in as a loan officer, and uh, Praveen is the loan officer. Now, 165 is the task instance ID. He clicks on the task, cleanse the task. We see the form. Here, the approve and reject buttons are in uh, hidden uh, read only mode uh, because he needs to do a credit check first then this will become available to him. So let's do a credit check. When he clicks the verify credit in the back end, it will, uh, it calls a web service, it's an external web service, uh, and uh, the uh, web service returns if the credit has uh, approved or rejected. Let's do it. In the back end, it's called the web service. Now the applicant is uh, good to go. He is approved. Now he can uh, click approve so that it will move to the next step of the process. He can reject. It will go back to the submitter. He can cancel. If he cancels out, the process instance will close out. Let's approve. Now it's gone from his work list, so it must have moved to the next task that is under writer. Let's log in as under writer, and as uh, mentioned, RAM is under writer. Login 165 is the instance ID. Here you can see, view the instance diagram, modify the task also. Let's see the view instance diagram. This is real-time visibility you get with IBM BPM that Praveen was talking about. Here you can see the yellow bubble. 
it shows that task is waiting here. This is out of the box. Okay. And if you're here on the right, you can see the following uh, the mention. Uh, these are the social capabilities of IBM VPN. And you, you, when you click the task and claim the task, you will see the details of the task. The uh, instance ID, the due date, uh, the steps that have been completed previously. Here is the stream. Stream means just like Facebook feed, who acted on uh, what task, what are the comments they posted. Here is user user can uh, put their own comment. Like that. And also here, if I want to specifically mention somebody or ping somebody or need a help from some person, then I can write at the rate Praveen, and post it. So when Praveen logs in, you will see a ping from Ram that Ram needs some help. He can reply back to Ram. So let's come to the form. He, he sees the form now. Now he has additional fields to fill up. Okay, now he can do a approve, reject, or cancel. Cancel will close out the process instance. Reject will um, stamp into the database uh, with the rejection uh, status. Approve will persist into the database with all the values of the loan application as well as the status as approved. And also it will send an email notification to the submitter, the, the applicant uh, that is submit. So let's do a happy path. Let's approve it. Now, if we go here, we will see a, to some with a email system has sent a email notification. Okay, that completes our process instance. And <laughs> hi, uh, Praveen, back to you. Praveen. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Sambit, for sharing that. So, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your patience. Uh, it's a lot to cram in a one-hour webinar, but uh, we wanted to do things a little bit differently. Like I said, instead of just showing you slides, we wanted to go that extra step and actually show you, give you an, in, an insight or a preview into how we do the modeling in the cloud and then how we bring the model, import the model, the actual business model, into the IT development environment, which is Business Process Designer, BPM 8.5, how it jump starts the development. We talked about how very quickly business users can start using that interface. And the, the UI that, that somebody showed you, that would be, in theory, that would be something we would work with the business subject matter experts and ask them, do you want the button here? Do you want a text box here or a radio button here? Um, you know, so any kind of uh, human oriented tasks that they would like to complete that they may be doing manually today, we could potentially automate that for them as well. And behind the scenes, there is a good interaction, integration with services, with systems. Uh, and you have, as somebody showed you, the, the full life cycle of that particular process. So for a particular business model, if you had 10,000 instances, you could figure out how many loans got approved, how many got denied, what were the reasons, you know, which ones were cycle related, which ones were lack of, you know, or data, data issue related, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of metrics and uh, business activity monitoring, things like that, that you can also begin to uh, harness with, with the power of BPM. 
Um, so I wanted to thank everybody for taking the time uh, to to join the, the webinar today. Uh, some of this you wouldn't mind if you could just hand me back the control. You should be good to go. Thank you. And we, I, I wanted to emphasize quickly that uh, we are here to help. We are your partners. We would love to be part of your growth story, your innovation story. Um, what's different about ProSoft from some of our competitors is we like to personalize the experience. And you'll see that uh, given the fact that we've had uh, so many years of experience with various different products, we come to this with a different uh, perspective. Um, and we have actually seen the evolution of BPM from back in the day when the products, BPM really was not even being used. It was more of a workflow, MQ or MQ workflow or Websphere process server, Websphere Lombardi edition. We've seen that evolution. We have the expertise. We have a dedicated IBM practice for this, for these types of initiatives. And uh, we'd love to be able to uh, answer any questions now. Uh, so back over to you, Jack. Thanks, Praveen. Thank you, uh, Shambhat. Yep, so as I was mentioning uh, the initial uh, talks I, uh, of this presentation, of course, uh, we are going to utilize this uh, last quick uh, uh, three, four minutes to answer any of your questions you have. I already started seeing a couple, but I just wanted to give a few more seconds to all the participants if they could uh, really uh, type down your questions. I'm just noting down here. I think the speaker should be able to answer all those. We'll wait for a few more seconds. Okay. So the one I have, uh, uh, Praveen, um, this gentleman, uh, you know, is asking, is there any real value in building a current state ASIS process? Could one not go directly to the future state to be process modeling and automation? And also, if you could talk a little bit about the typical challenges one might, one might face when doing a process discovery? As a okay, question. very good question. Uh, I'll tackle it since it's a two-part question. The first question is the reason why we always recommend doing the current state uh, process discovery is because uh, it's hard to project um, where you'd like to be tomorrow without being able to fully develop insights into the pain points of today. And oftentimes, one of the ways, one of the best ways to analyze a process is to bring visibility into it. So. Um, oftentimes we might think that this is, you know, we just need three steps in order to get to the future state. We need to improve these, these areas. Uh, but after a deeper discovery of the current state is only after then we are able to say, uh, well, now we actually need to do four more things. So that's why we always recommend doing a process discovery with a, with a full current state and future state, um, you know, type of methodology. To your second question, um, I believe what was what are the typical challenges that you face when you do a process discovery? This is interesting a question because uh, there is a social aspect to it is when process consultants typically come on site, uh, you know, we, we like to, I, at ProSoft, one of the things we do is we, we really like to work with senior management officials and you know, because the idea is really not to scare people away into by interviewing them about their jobs and how they do things because uh, sometimes there's a perception that well if I talk about this and I guess am I, am I going to lose my job uh, so we work very carefully with with senior management to make sure that really the initiative is here to empower you to retrain you perhaps for some new technology or to make your life easier as the business subject matter expert so that's one challenge um, getting the subject matter experts together in one room at the same time Perhaps that there are different geographies, different time zones. That's always a challenge. And of course, they also have a day job. So this might be a big organizational um, initiative, but you know they still need to make time for their day job and then come help with this process improvement initiative. So those are the types of typical challenges. But we have a very good 
uh, handle on on t types of uh, and mitigation strategies. So hopefully that answered your question. But yeah. thank you for that question, Jack. Anything else? Thanks, Praveen. Yeah, we are. We have two more. I see. Question number two I have here is. We already have BPM in our organization today and are not looking to roll out our BPM corporate IT infrastructure and services to various business units within the business organization. One current problem we are facing is that our team is busy doing BPM development and support activities and we don't always have the bandwidth to spend time with each business unit and guide them through this effort. So okay. is asking any suggestions on how to, yeah. Okay, thank you, Jack. So uh, this is a very, very good question, actually. We, we see this uh, a fair amount, and this, to summarize, to rephrase a little bit, is it's this idea that you already have a BPM um, sort of team that's in place at an organization, and they're now starting to expand and roll out their functionality, perhaps corporate functionality, to other business units in the organization that are just now starting to adopt the technology. Uh, so one way, you know, so if you are very busy in the process of building and supporting services, you don't always have the resources or the time, is to really uh, start to think about perhaps establishing a BPM center of excellence. Uh, and have, you know, and that's a process. It's, it's easier said than done. But the idea is that you really begin to now leverage uh, best practices uh, that you can now work with um, and provide to the business units and really empower them and enable them to build the, their business models whereas you perhaps support them. And that's a very good model because then they become to, they start to learn mm -hmm. uh, and they follow your guidelines, your policies, your standards uh, which come from corporate uh, and then you also build that relationship with them. Um, so that's one way of doing it, and we have uh, we have a tremendous amount of expertise in helping not only build BPM centers of excellence, establishing, building a fund, uh, sort of how to establish a business case for a funding model. Um, so we we typically, you know, we'd be happy to perhaps talk a little bit more with you if you'd like for us to maybe come on site and talk and do a little workshop. Uh, so there's a there's a methodology to, to that. But thank you for that question. Sure. So quickly, uh, number three, we, we have here, uh, we are just looking to get started on a process discovery and looking to invest in BPM. Is BlueWorks needed over existing products like uh, Visio? Yes. Thank you, Jack, for that question. And thank you um, for that very important question. Visio is, as I mentioned in my presentation earlier, is it's not really able to harness the collaborative nature of business and IT teams working together where people can work together and have very good visibility into a process model. Uh, and that's why we recommend using a business process analysis and discovery tool like BlueWorks Live. And uh, to add to that, it is not it is a technology agnostic product. So you can still do your process discovery, uh, discovery and assessment. Uh, and, not, and if you decide not to go with an IBM uh, workflow engine, or BPM engine, that's fine. You can still have those, the benefit of having those business process models uh, documented and in your inventory. So thank you for that question. Yeah, ready. Uh, I think we are getting more. So here is number four for you. We are looking for a mapping tool. Are there competitors in this space with BlueWorks Live and how do they compare? Um, I guess I'm, I don't understand the full context of the, the question, but I will try and answer it. Um, I, I presume in terms of mapping tool, you know, the, the questioner is talking more about uh, how do we go about mapping um, the business activities into and tie them into systems or services types. There is no, um, you know, specific tool. Uh, there are other competitors and other products, uh, but in my opinion, nothing really comes uh, close to having a, the collaborative nature of, of an online type of tool. Um, but, you know, historically we've also had Webster business modeler types of tools and 
they were fine tools, but they were very thick uh, and installation heavy types of modeling tools. But in terms of mapping, I mean, I know there's like a, there are certain mind mapping type tools where you can draw pictures and decisions and activities, things of that sort. Sure. So he's clarifying here. Uh, he's trying to get rid of, uh, I mean, trying to rid ourselves of uh, visual and are uh, investigating various tools for this. Need to have views across systems like link and tie. Uh, I mean to say link and tie together, like hands off right. points, integration with data, etc. Yeah. Right, and you know what? Um, I would just say to that particular question, Jack, I think we may, if you could just take a note of it, and we'd be happy to get back to the user. I'm not uh, familiar with a specific mapping tool, but we'd be happy to, to look into that and get back to you. Sorry, we couldn't. We sure. couldn't give you a quick answer on on the webinar today. Well, that's okay. We can get back. Yeah, sure. So the other thing we have for you, uh, uh, Praveen, is during the process modeling, do customers have a tendency to confuse systems with business processes? They do. Um, it's unfortunately it's not their fault because what happens is is IT developers and architects. Um, they are very, very brilliant people, uh, but they have a tendency to work and, and look at certain things in certain ways, and the business has a different perspective. They have a different language. They think in terms of swim lanes. Um, so that's why it's always very important to, when you go through a process modeling effort or an initiative, to make sure all the stakeholders, business and, and IT, are you know, collaborating and making sure, and they have one sort of central point uh, to connect on. And that's why I said earlier in the presentation, the process really is the map, because now I can look at this, I mean, loan origination process, and I can say, here are the steps in my business process, and for that, for these four or five, six steps, these are the systems that I map to, and these are the people that I will need to work with, or the services, and perhaps an organization might be now looking to get into the cloud, uh, you know, or API strategy and services, things like that. Uh, what, ProSoft has a lot of, you know, tremendous um, capabilities in terms of being able to come on board and showcase uh, some things that we do very well to that work with your existing environment or prepare you for other strategies and initiatives that you're looking at. But yes, there is a tendency. Um, it's a bit of a misnomer, but with some education, and that per sometimes comes with the center of excellence I talked about, with some education, with, with some working together, with some JAD sessions, if you will, uh, those, are, those are some minor issues that we can mitigate. Sure, one last before we uh, wind up, uh, Praveen. So <clears throat> what are your views about uh, building BPM applications or processes from scratch on cloud? My views are that it, it's really dependent on the organization and the context. So if you are an organization that is already, you know, maybe perhaps you're heavily invested in, in IBM software, BPM software, you're thinking about uh, investing, then, and you're a bigger shop, if, if, if I may use that phrase, then it, you know, then you want to go maybe perhaps the more traditional, conventional, on-prem route. You build, you have your own infrastructure, your own servers, you get the traditional licenses from IBM for the software, and you build, and you build your teams, things like that. But if you are a smaller shop, or perhaps you're starting in a phased approach, you want to kind of have the mentality of an agile or a, um, a startup, uh, and you want, you don't really want to spend your time as much on infrastructure and support and maintenance, you can definitely go the route of the cloud. IBM does offer that path, uh, and it jump starts your evolution, perhaps, into the development process, and then you can now focus more on the development. But um, there are there are some there are some steps and strategies that you have to first uh, follow in order to get to that point. And you want to make sure, for example, if you have uh, privacy-related concerns with your data. Uh, you have to have that level of comfort that you know your data. Perhaps some of your data might be in the cloud; it might not be on-prem. 
So those are the kinds of things. But otherwise, I mean, it, it really depends on the every your the business model itself, the problem we are trying to solve, um, the solutions we're trying to enable, and you know, is it actually saving us? Is it saving the organization some cost by reducing infrastructure and maintenance type related activities, things like that? If it saves you some cost, then you see, you see that you can still achieve your your um, the you know the values the value adds that you're looking for then it it makes and it makes sense then by all means but my point is ProSoft actually has a process where we come on site and actually work that out with you uh, and part of that by the way also is something we can do as part of the discovery because process discovery is not just about documenting the process it's also about process design it's high level process design so that's something we would uh, we can also talk to you about. Sure. Thanks, Praveen. <clears throat> That's about it from the Q and A session. I think uh, I, I, you know, we we are done here. Thank you all for all the participants. As a next step, I'm going to um, send an email to each and every participant uh, or attendees who made this uh, webinar a success, and uh, uh, you will shortly see a thank you email from me. Uh, please get back or respond to that. Uh, you know, if you have any more inquiries, where we could uh, set up a call. Uh, or a face-to-face -face if required. Thank you all. Thank you, speakers. Uh, you all have a great uh, weekend. This is Jack from ProSoft Group signing off. Thank you.